All right, so uh, we are always preparing for the worst and hoping for the best, and right now we're going to be spared the worst, but you know what? These storms have a mind of their own, so you never know. Yeah, and it still could move. I mean, yeah. it, we're, we're early, and hopefully it moves a little west for our sake. Right. But if it moves any for Eastern, then we would have a different experience. We would have a different experience. And the thing is, we're set to see it become a hurricane a little later today. But we were just talking about coming in early tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. The wind gust will be in the 30, 40 mile an hour range, and we're going to get about an inch and a half of rain here. That's still impactful, though, because when you think about the rivers, they're already, you know, high. But um, if we pay attention and you prepare now, you will be all right. Let's get you caught up. So here you go. Here's your 5 a.m. advisory. We've got winds out there with this particular system at 65 miles an hour right now. It's moving at about nine miles an hour, so it's a slow mover at this point. But once it makes its way into the Gulf, you'll see right here uh, by about you know 2 p.m. this afternoon when we get that advisory, we should have a Category 1 hurricane. As Mel mentioned, these things can change, but this is what we know right now. As it continues to move up overnight tonight, uh, by the 2 a.m. advisory, we should have a Cat 2 hurricane. And then by the time we get to tomorrow afternoon, should have a category three. So this is gonna be very impactful. I was texting with a friend of mine that's actually a meteorologist in Tallahassee this morning. I know they're very worried about the rainfall, the winds and the power outages. And uh, as this does make landfall likely in the Big Bend, we are worried too about power outages because with the winds that we're gonna see, they're gonna be very impactful, specifically up in Georgia, hurricane force winds. I'm gonna get you caught up on it. I just wanna show you who's gonna see what because with the rain we've had, we're already saturated. And so a lot of these models are in agreement as to where this would go, but again, things can still change. So we'll let you know when and if they do. Let's get you caught up right now though and show you a little bit about what we've got going on out there. This, this graphic, by the way, is on our website, newsforjacks.com. If you wanna take a more specific look at the tropical storm warning the hurricane warnings, the flood warnings, and the tropical storm watches we've got in place for the time being. You can do that. And it's really uh, an imminent thing to do because, you know, we've got a lot going on. Let's just zoom you in. We've got a hurricane warning here uh, in this orangish color. And uh, as you look back here, tropical storm warnings in the brown color. So a lot of us are impacted by that. And again, mainly because of the winds that we're going to have coming in. You've also got a tropical storm watch up here in parts of Georgia. Uh, so a lot of different uh, factors here. I did want to just zoom in on each of those and give you an idea of what's going on. But as we get to tonight by about 10 o'clock, you're going to have gusts in the teens and the 20s. And then by tomorrow morning, okay, into the noon hour, those gusts increase to the 30s and 40s. And as we get into tomorrow afternoon and evening, that's where we see gust in the 40s and 50s. And that's going to be quite impactful. But as the storm right here, you can see it turns up, that's where things get real for Waycross, 85 mile an hour wind gust. So that's a hurricane force wind and it's going to be very dangerous, very impactful where the rest of us are uh, in the 50s and 60s, which is still quite dangerous. Bring anything you can inside or lock it down so it does not blow away or cause danger to you or anybody around you. I think that's really imperative to mention. By Friday morning, you're going to have gusts dropping into the 20s, but that's still going to be impactful with how saturated that ground is. We could still see trees uproot. You could still see power lines come down, so we'll keep an eye out. But the rainfall forecast is pretty telling. Uh, it's heavier over toward Lake City and Gainesville up toward Waycross. Jacksonville, we get about an inch and a half in our area. So let's take a look. I am in great agreement with the European model. I've taken a look at many different models this morning, and this one seems to be the one that hits closest to what we would see. So look at this. St. Mary's, almost two inches of rain uh, over here in Valdosta to almost three and a half inches of rain. So good amount of rainfall coming down in an already saturated area. Uh, but I do want to show you future track just so you get an idea. As we get into this afternoon, evening, and then overnight hours, we do certainly have some showers that come through. Tomorrow morning, here you go, by about 7 a.m., yeah, it's going to be wet. But the real impact comes tomorrow afternoon and evening when the storm is churning up and moving through with the winds and the rain. The severe risk for tomorrow is anywhere from a slight risk to an enhanced risk, which does have me a little concerned that a tornado watch could be put in place. We'll certainly be watching that for you. Keep you updated. The severe risk comes down a bit into Friday, but again, the uh, winds and the rain still a little issue for Friday morning. The rip current risk has increased. We are now at a high risk here in Jacksonville down our coastline. So just so you know, 501 Riverside, dark and early out there right now dry and calm, but that'll certainly be changing. Temperatures in the 70s and 80s for the time being, and these are my predictions. Take a look with me specifically at the next three days, because again, this afternoon and evening, we're going to start to see some of those showers build. Tomorrow is our impact day, and then by Friday in the mornings, you're still going to have those wind gusts in the 20s with some of that rain moving through, and then the rain chances really taper off into the weekend, much, much more isolated, but yeah, they're still there.